It begins with an anxious moment, as a lady runs scared inside a building. When she exits it, someone falls from above. A few seconds pass, and a car crashes into her. We do not know how much time has passed. When we observe the lady lying in a hospital bed, she is Helen. In a short time, she opens her eyes. Then a man comes in to see her. She asks who he is, which worries him. However, it was only a joke. The first thing she does while greeting a man she knows after a terrible accident is by telling such a worrisome joke. Shortly after, we discover why it could have been very worrisome. Helen's accident was over one year ago. Now he wants her to come home so they can be a family. He shows her a picture of their daughter, born during Helen's coma. All of this seems to overwhelm her, and she starts panicking. Her husband, Greg, tries to get help. Later, he brings their baby to her as she occupies a wheelchair. Helen does not display enthusiasm towards seeing her for the first time. After awakening from a long coma, such a reaction could make sense. During another time, a man comes in to see Helen. He is Detective Shepard. He informs her that before her coma, someone saw her running from the building in distress. He also wants to know what her relationship was like with her father. She tells him he raised her alone. Before leaving, the detective wants her to call him if she remembers anything. After that, Greg tells her he had to sell the house. Helen does not seem too upset with such news. What she's curious to know is where they live now. The next scene has him bringing her back to the building she ran from. Once they are there, Helen gets a short flashback. Greg assures her they will not stay there forever. When she picks up a picture, she remembers a man telling her that he loves her. It is likely her father. Later, Greg brings her to a room that used to be her father's study. It is there where we see Helen tell her husband for the first time that she missed him. They follow that by kissing. On another day, Helen tries feeding their baby who does not cooperate with her mom. This causes the mother to become somewhat rough with her. Greg has to take the baby away. It's still too early to tell, but perhaps Helen's behavior has shifted negatively after her coma. Then she starts practicing walking out of her wheelchair. Greg is there with their daughter to support her. We see this is the kind of husband he is. He has been supportive of her since she awakened. Listening to a voice message, Helen hears that a man named Frank has called her father. This prompts her to visit the man at his home. He lets her in and treats her generously. She tells him she needs to remember what her dad told her before he lost his life. Frank thinks such matters are best put to rest. We see he is a humble man, who wants to offer his support in any way. As they speak, Helen watches the children play outside. She hallucinates one of them having a zombie's face. Aside from that odd happening, a nosebleed surprises Helen. Upon returning home, she finds a lady there, who introduces herself as Trisha, her health visitor. Shortly after, they find bruises on the baby. Greg shows concern as to how they got there. He wants Helen to keep a better watch on her. A welcoming back party for Helen is then what we see at their apartment. Helen sits looking disoriented while holding her baby. Afterward, she comes to Greg, who is talking with a priest. He is Father Munro. His first words to Helen are that he is sorry for what happened to her father. Soon Frank enters the party and brings Helen some flowers. Since Greg was there to see it, he calls his wife from another room. Once she comes to him, he shows her he disapproves of her inviting Frank because doing so brings up her negative past. Later, Helen hears Greg talking to Frank over the baby radio. Greg discovers, along with Helen, that the man lost his daughter before she was a teenager. He is instantly sorry to hear that. On another day, Greg gets ready to leave for work. He will return only after a few days. Helen seems upset over this. It means she will have to be alone with her daughter, taking part in all the parenting activities alone. When she is by herself, Frank comes over. They spend some time talking about children and being parents. The man shows more care by bringing a present for Helen's daughter. They have a rather easy time until she mentions Frank having a daughter. He wears a more serious face at that point. Helen wants to know when he knew he loved her. She almost cries, asking this. Frank answers it was the first time he looked into her eyes. He saw himself in her. Helen feels uneasy, so she continues to question. She wants to know if Frank would do anything differently if given another chance. He answers he would spend more time with his daughter. He would also say he was sorry for not being the father she needed. At this moment, he senses a theme in her questioning. Frank wants her to understand that being a parent is hard. But Helen believes there is something wrong with her. The last piece of advice she receives is for her to be herself. At another time, Helen paints with her daughter by her side. She is trying to have a good time with her. Helen leaves from another room and we see an untidy girl standing there. Now we come to understand that the place they are living in is likely haunted. She also has a nightmare as she sleeps. It is about all the things that currently bother her. We see that her baby daughter is among them. Then Helen wakes up to hear a knock on the door. From the stairs, she observes a small girl, who soon starts slamming her head against the glass. This prompts Helen to rush to the door. However, no one is behind it. The girl was likely a ghost. The situation scares her to the point of calling Greg. She wants to know if he ever experienced anything like what she just did. Yet he doesn't answer her directly. So she ends the call, believing she could go through with what took place. On the following day, Helen comes to see Detective Shepard at the police station. She starts telling him things that take him by surprise. One of them is her thinking her father was maybe trying to remind her what he said to her the night he lost his life. To such a statement, Shepard says she is confused. She corrects him by saying she is scared. She also starts losing control of her manners and wants to know if he can help her. 
by saying he cannot, Helen leaves quickly. Now not only is her husband not with her, but she also can't get help from the police. It is becoming a solitary experience for Helen. At home, she notices something pass by, while in the washroom. As she sleeps, it seems like the same girl from before crawls under the bed. A crashing sound awakens Helen. It was a bottle that fell. After she picks up the broken pieces from a bottle, we see the same girl standing on the counter. In the morning, something makes Helen look under the bed. Some paranoia has probably entered her. A psychic investigator arrives at her door. With this, we see she is serious about understanding what is happening in her life. He tells her that some environments are like recording devices for spirits. Certain events repeat constantly. Some ghosts could keep reliving their worst moment. Then the man sits down to talk to Helen's father, Robert. As he talks, Helen says she is having shortness of breath for some reason. The man tells her that spirits could impose their feelings onto humans. This makes her wonder why her dad would do that. The psychic says that maybe it's not him. Shortly after, a loud continuous noise takes place, making Helen cover her ears. Meanwhile, the psychic is writing something in a small book. He looks possessed while he is doing it. Once it's over, he shows her the six names he wrote down. Since she does not recognize them, the man believes they could be lost souls that can't enter heaven. He adds that the longer this goes on, the worse it will get. At that moment, Helen gets scared to see the ghost girl on a bike in place of her daughter. Following that, Helen asks her neighbor, Mulvaney, if he lived there for a long time. After he says he did, she asks about the people who lived in their flat before her dad. He gives her some last names, but no first ones, which are the ones she needs. She wants to know if they would match the names the psychic wrote down. She follows by searching the internet for missing people in London. Then she quickly updates it to a missing girl on a bike. That is when she finds a girl named Susan from Stoneworth. Along with her, there are other missing children. This prompts her to give her home keys to Mulvaney, because she decides to ride out. No one is helping her, so she takes matters into her own hands. She is determined to solve this issue, one way or another. Arriving at a house, she meets a man named James Collins. He is the father of one of the missing children. While inside, we see she already explained her situation to him. Of course, he doesn't believe her. He tells her his son loved to draw and shows Helen some of his drawings. A particular drawing interests her. It shows a man wearing a bag over his head. James calls the man Sackhead. It is quite a disturbing image to appear in a child's gallery. The scene shifts to Helen talking to perhaps the main parent, Susan's mother. She says that the day before Susan vanished, she said she was followed by a man with no face. The mom is certain that this very man is the one who took her away. She also points her to a certain detective, to whom she told this long ago. After that, the sensible move for Helen to make is to visit that detective. So she does, upon meeting her. The detective, Jillian, states she hasn't been a detective for some time. Once Helen tells her their meeting is regarding the disappearance of the children, Jillian's face shows it's a topic she would rather not talk about. Inside, while drinking, Jillian says they found only one body, and it was of a five-year-old girl. She also says where they found her, along with the cause of her demise. Jillian quit once that case was shut down. At that point, Helen asks if she ever heard of the name Sackett. The former detective tells her a short story. She got a call from someone one day. There was nothing but breathing from the other end. She thinks that person was Sackett. She also says that the less she knows, the less she will remember. Perhaps this is a weakness on her part, because if she knew more, she could help solve the case. Having performed her investigation, Helen acquired some valuable insights. Three people have confirmed there existed a person who was known as Sackett, so that is something for her to keep in mind. When Helen returns home, Mulvaney tells her he remembers Helen as a small girl, with her doll. She thinks she was born in that flat, yet he tells her she wasn't. She came there at the age of four years. He helps her remember she originally came from Stoneworth, the place the children vanished from. It is uncertain how she feels upon hearing this strange news. Later, she finds a paper that proves she did live there. She also finds a picture of her younger self standing near a house at the place. Then she talks to Frank. He tells Helen that her father must have had a reason for lying to her. Though at that point, she questions if she is her father's daughter. She wants to know the name of Frank's daughter. He tells her it was Anna. Shortly after, her baby screams. So Helen rushes to her. The ghost girl scares her in the process. On top of that, Shepard happens to be there, knocking on the door. Many events start happening at the same time. Helen can't get to her daughter, but Shepard breaks through the front door. The next scene has them at the police station. He says he can either file a report or they can talk this out. However, she tells him he can't help her. To those disappointing words, he now wants to listen. He says they don't need ghosts to haunt them. After telling him she is just tired of everything that is going on, he instantly catches her in a lie. He also says that worse than lying is someone telling him what he wants to hear. Once she leaves, the detective seems upset with how the conversation ended. Outside the station, Helen sees Greg. He shows concern because of how the police found her in their flat. This makes them get into an argument regarding where they should live. Yet she can't leave now that she is close to understanding her situation. She also emphasizes that her dad took in front of her. Furthermore, she wants to know if he still loves her. But the man says it's not that simple anymore. He tells her he is taking the baby. Then we see her sitting depressed alone, holding the toy Frank gave her. Eventually, she gets spooked by a ghost boy walking by. 
He places a box on the floor, so she opens it to find a letter. It is from Jillian, regarding Susan. This makes her drive out to the house in the photo of her as a young girl. Upon her arrival, Helen sees a small girl standing near the house. She follows her until the girl vanishes, leaving a shovel in her place. Helen uses it to dig at the girl's vanishing point. As she does, she keeps hearing whispers of the word, Sackhead. Soon enough, a skull is revealed. Following that, the police settle there, inspecting the findings. Shepard is there as well. Helen wonders how she didn't know about what her father did. The detective tells her that he was a master manipulator. What she wants to know now is how many children he has destroyed. She sits there, devastated that her life was a lie. What could have been the reason for her father to do what he did? She knows that whatever it was, it could not have been justified by such vile actions. Later, she stands in a church with Father Monroe. She cries, trying to understand why God does not intervene when so much evil exists. Monroe replies that free will is what makes some people choose to do wrong. Helen also discovers that he knew about what her dad did. She corners him to get the information out. Once she does, he tells Helen that her dad told him so in a confession. This makes her walk out on him in frustration. At home, Helen calls the psychic, wanting his help so she could talk to her father. He tells her to stare into a mirror long enough until someone appears. So she does that and gets to see her father walking. She begins talking to him as he goes to the balcony to jump off. Her words are somewhat muffled. She won't forgive him for what he did. Then she witnesses him jump. Oddly enough, he reappears to repeat his action. At that point, Helen is reminded of what the psychic told her, that some spirits relive their worst moment constantly. While that keeps taking place, Helen uncovers a picture of her dad standing with another man and a small girl. It makes her utter Frank's name. In a short while, Greg arrives with the baby. An unknown individual cuts him from behind. Meanwhile, Helen drives away. Jillian also happens to be there. It doesn't take long for her to find the lifeless Greg. A message arrives on his phone, just in time for her to hear it. It is from Helen, telling Greg where to meet her. Jillian takes note of that, while noticing the baby is gone. The place where Helen drove to is Frank's house. Oddly, his front door is open. Helen walks slowly in there, until she hears someone singing about Sackhead. Following the voice, she soon finds Frank. She wants to know if that is his real name. He responds that he could ask the same of her. He thinks they have more in common than she could know. Helen cries, asking who he is. He answers by welcoming her home as Anna. She does not want to accept it. Perhaps his words trigger the flashback she very much wanted to have. Her father is there, saying he lied to her. He says he is not her father. Her dad is a He took children while Robert stayed silent. What he did was bury them. To protect Helen, he gave her a new home and a new name. He also confirms in that flashback her true name is Anna. Frank is his brother. Back at Frank's home, the man tells her he's sorry he wasn't the father she needed him to be. He cannot help who he is. Soon Helen hears a noise nearby. She opens a nearby door to find a chained child. Then she witnesses Frank coming at her as Sackhead. He says he always wanted a boy. As he walks toward her, she yells that he is not her father. She would never accept a monster like him. After that, she demands to know where her daughter is. Frank knocks her on the head. Not bringing any more harm to her, he starts walking away. However, he doesn't go far. Jillian is there to shoot him at the doorway. Since she is no longer a detective, she gets taken in by the police. Detective Shepard takes Helen home. When they arrive, she just walks out without saying a word. Due to everything that has happened, she is disoriented, too strongly affected to speak to anyone. In a few minutes, Shepard gets a call that Helen's baby was found. In the meantime, she slowly walks to the balcony, while the detective rushes to tell her the good news. Before the film ends, we witness Helen possibly letting herself go from the edge of the balcony. She has lost the man who raised her. Her real father was a monster, she thought her daughter would likely never be found, and her husband lost his life. Helen realized she had nothing left to live for. If she let herself go, it is no wonder why.